Let's talk about Roku today and how it's different from all the various options that people have for how to stream content. I mean, there's Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, various Chrome sticks and dongles and yeah. boxes. There are internet connected TVs from Samsung, etc. And then there are Roku's whole, a whole family of ways to connect, including Roku TVs and dongles from Roku, uh, et cetera. How do you, and I didn't even mention Amazon, um, but there are lots of others. How do you define Roku's difference between all of these other ways to get content? Yeah, so Roku is the leading streaming platform in the US by, by a wide margin. We stream a lot more hours than any of our competitors. And the way I think about Roku is we are a platform uh, for distributing content in the modern internet world. Uh, and we distribute our platform a bunch of different ways. So you think about what's our business model. Well, the first part is we have to distribute our platform, build scale of our platform. And we've got uh, you know about 20 million active accounts at this point. And in Q1, that grew 47% year over year. And then we monetize that, that platform. So how do, we, how do we build scale of that platform? Uh, we, we sell players, that's how we got in, into the business. Uh, you know, we shipped the first Netflix streaming player, we shipped the first app store for television, um, you know, we shipped the first streaming stick, um, and we've been competing with companies for a long time, these other companies for a long time. I mean, Apple had Apple TV before we shipped the first Netflix player, for example, but back then it had a hard drive in it. Um, <clears throat> you know, and uh, Android actually licensed Android TV to TV companies before we started licensing the Roku OS, the TV companies, although today we have almost the entire market for licensed OSs. So, so why? So why, is why so why is that? That's because we've built a platform for streaming television, whereas our competitors have all built platforms uh, for mobile and then ported them to TV. So we built, Roku actually has the only operating system purpose-built for television. And, that, and that's what happens. I mean, if you, if you set, take a step back and just think big picture, you know, when new computing platforms emerge, what, like what is the pattern? Well, the pattern has never changed. The pattern is that a new software platform comes out and wins on new hardware platforms. So if you go back, for example, to PCs, well, before PCs, there were mainframes operating, and there were operating systems for mainframes. Well, when PCs became their own sort of its own computing platform, mainframe operating systems didn't make that transition. They didn't become the operating system for PCs. Windows became the operating system for PC. And when phones became their own computing platform, Windows didn't make that transition. You know, you're probably, I'm guessing you're not running Windows on your phone. Um, you know, Android purpose-built for, for phones and iOS also purpose-built for phones won that, that, that transition. And then if you look at smart TVs, which are becoming computing, our computing platforms, getting their own licensed operating system, those phone OSs are, have almost no market share, whereas Roku has a lot of market share because we've built a purpose-built platform for TV. So then people ask, okay, well, what does that mean, purpose-built for TV? Well, it means things like TVs are a brutally cost-competitive business. So we've built a software platform that's designed to give, give great performance on very low-cost hardware. And that uh, and that's critical. Like that's, and that's why we, for example, have a $29 Roku streaming player at the lowest price point yet still actually make a positive gross margin where our competitors all subsidized to come within striking this. So you make money on that $29 device because you designed and built the software for TV. It's not bloated and, and you know, so much that you have to build more expensive hardware around it to get it to run. Exactly. That's right. And then also, that's, and then other examples are the ad model. Like ads are super important in, TV, in the TV business. It's, you know, it's a, a lot of the revenue for TV content companies comes from ads. So we built ads, targeted ads, the ability to, to do ads into the Roku ad framework, which is sort of a first class citizen of our operating system. And, and there's other examples, but, but all of them are around the fact that we built software for TVs first. What's the next big shift? Maybe cultural, maybe technological, that's going to change the way we experience what today we're calling TV, you know, video streaming entertainment. Um, well, I think there's a lot of things changing as TV moves to streaming. You know, the the main, and it's, I think the big thing that's changed is competition. You know, before before streaming, uh, there was not a, a lot of competition in TV. I mean, there was some competition, but you know, cable companies only had a few, you know a couple hundred channels. Only certain big networks had access to those channels. Streaming allows any company to publish content to a, to a television. You know, that's why anyone can make a streaming channel for Roku. You don't have to be 
you know, CBS or provide a streaming channel. So right. competition is, is driving the innovation in streaming, and that's resulting in things like more content, lower cost, more choice for consumers. I think some of the changes we're going to start to see, you know, one of the reasons Roku has been successful is there's over 6,000 different apps on Roku, or we call them streaming channels. Yeah. But that's a hard way to find content in so many apps. Um, you know, I remember when uh, someone at Apple once said the future of TV is apps. Well, actually, the future of TV is not apps because people are, people are tired of looking in 6,000 apps for content. So I think one of the next evolutions in TV is how do we make it easier for consumers to find content when there's so many different publishers of content. I do it now. Well, we have something called the Roku Channel, <laughs> which is uh, it's just a free ad-supported movies and TV shows. Uh, but we just also added live news. And we're going to keep adding more and more content. It's the sandbox where we bring content uh, and make into a content-first user interface, make recommendations, use our data platform, our machine learning platform to sort of find find content and recommend it to customers. And so we think things like the Roku Channel will become the way content publishers end up publishing on platforms like and is, it, is it like an actual channel? Or oh, is it's it right here. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's an actual channel on Roku. Uh, but as it gets bigger and bigger and has more and more content, you can imagine someday it might become the Roku home screen. Um, it's also, we're also going to uh, publish it off Roku as well. Like we announced that the Roku channel will be on Samsung TVs this summer as well. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, why would you do that? I mean, because you're trying to sell Roku. Why give Samsung the Roku channel? Well, we're, I think of Roku as a large-scale publishing platform. If you're a content owner and you want to publish that content and monetize it, we can do that for you. That's what we do. We, we distribute content. Uh, and a preferred way to do that is to be the operating system of your TV. There are some companies like Samsung that are probably not going to license our operating system. So taking the best of content on Roku, putting it in a channel, and putting it on those kinds of platforms is another way for our our content publishers to get broader distribution for their content. And then does Samsung pay you to carry the Roku channel? Do you become sort of like an HBO, a Showtime, you know, a, a premium content offering that they're paying for and you're kind of getting that revenue stream and maybe a share of the advertising, et cetera, et cetera? Well, we haven't announced our business relationship with Samsung, but... That would be a great time. That would not, <laughs> that might not be the best time. Uh, but. What, what I do think, I do think the trend is that we're going to see, over time, more and more aggregation to these big destination apps. And Netflix, obviously, is like, you know, the original destination app. Um, but I think that's what the Roku channel is as well. Uh, and we're starting out from a different place, whereas, you know, an app like, uh, you know, traditional OTT apps are subscription services. Actually, um, consumers of streaming also go to streaming because they want better value. Right. They go because there's great content and it's a better experience, but they also want better value. They want to pay less. And free ad-supported content is very popular on Roku, but it's an underserved market. There's not a good place to go to get a single place to go to get an aggregated experience with lots of great free content. So that's where we're starting out with the Roku channel, is trying to build a great aggregated experience of free content. Um, but we think that over time, you know, it'll be a it'll be a big destination app like some of these other big destination apps as well.